that dirty braves cap on the dash. I had no sense that we were in any danger at all. It felt so safe. You see as far as the eye can see, just start, like shoulder to shoulder people. So I was getting that on videotape, just kind of show how big the crowd was. It's the height of this country western concert below him. Stephen Paddock decided, I want to kill as many people as possible. Pops the window, has his weapons lined up, ready to go. We were in the front row enjoying Jason Aldean. And in the video, we are so happy and everybody is just thrilled. And 10 minutes later, all hell broke loose. The uh, shots fired. It felt like fireworks, honestly. That's just a firecracker. I actually turned to Sonny and I said, was that a gun? And he said, I don't think so, because the music was very loud. I heard a, like a crackle sound. And it was so odd to where, I mean, I've been around firearms my whole life, but I didn't think it was a, a weapon at all. I thought it was just like some feedback maybe from the amplifiers or something. So I continued to, to, to shoot. Um, and then I hear somebody was like, was that a gun? I was like, you know what? On second thought, that sounded like an AR-15 from far away. It was an AR. It sounded like something out of, you, you hear in the news with Afghanistan or Iraq, any of the movies we see now. Uh, just the uh, click, 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 click. It's not a real gun. That doesn't sound like a real gun. It is a That's me screaming that it is a real gun. And within seconds, you could tell, no, that is not fireworks. That is, that is somebody just spraying bullets down on people, innocent people. I said, I think that's guns. And that's when Jason Aldean ran off the stage and people started running. I had a little little mini flashlight, so I start waving it to everybody. I'm like, guys, get everybody off the stage, everybody off the stage. I see the road crew and a bunch of people running off the stage, taking Jason Aldean with him, running as fast as they could down the stairs. And my first instinct was to get the flashlight on the stairs so that they can at least see where they're going. They weren't stopping. The shots were not stopping. They just kept going and going. And um, I mean, the only thing that we could think of was just to run, just to run. Guys, keep going, please, please. Get out, get out, get out. My boyfriend threw me to the floor, like trying to um, protect me. And it felt like a metal, like medicine ball like a 100-pound medicine ball just landed on me. So it was like I got hit or I got shot. I said to Sonny, we just need to get down. And he said, no, we can't get down because we'll get trampled. And that's when he um, just wrapped his arms around me from behind, and we started running. And that's when I felt him get shot in the back, and we fell to the ground. I felt the impact of the bullet in his body because he was holding me. I think he could hear me at first, but I, I couldn't tell where he'd been shot from. I just saw a lot of blood and I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell and he couldn't talk to me. I couldn't feel a pulse. So I started doing CPR and there was still bullets flying all around us. I was pinned down and I couldn't get out of there. I mean, you could hear the pff, 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 sounds. It sounded like the, the shots just raining through the tent flaps. You had no idea where the gunman was, where the shots were being fired from. Get out of here! There's gunshots coming from over there. Go that way. Uniformed police officers at the venue. They get pinned down because they're right there with the crowd. They have their their body cams on, and you can see them sort of the fear and like the unknown of. Where is this coming from? Hey, they're shooting right at us, guys. Where's it at? Oh, hey, it's coming out of the mentally base. It's coming out of the window. North of the mentally base, coming out of the window. And I decided that I wanted to record every single thing that was happening. I just thought, if I'm going to die, I want my kids and my family to know, to 
know that this is what happened. You're seeing people plugging holes with, with their fingers like to stop the blood, you know, and, and, and ex-military telling everyone where to go, what to do. Stay low, keep moving, don't stop. Go that way, go that way, go that way. I saw everyone, every single one of these police officers running towards the danger. It was all survival, but you saw the best out of everybody. There was a hero that, in one of my videos, that he, he ran out there, he risked his life, and that man, he, you'll see it, he jumps out of the, the out down and he kind of looks around for gunfire. No! And then he goes out there to assist, and I don't know if he's alive. I hope to God he's alive. You could hear people shouting for help and need a medic, and uh, I've been shot. It wasn't until we got around the corner um, that we seen a girl get hit. She was alive two seconds after we turned that corner and she dropped. Like, she just dropped weightless, like nothing I've ever seen before. Get up on your feet, on your feet. Let's go, I'm on with you, sister. Help me, help on your feet. Here, thank you, get down. I heard a gap and like, okay, he's reloading. You gotta get out, you gotta get out. Go now, and I got up and I ran. All I could think about was just run. I don't care what just happened, just run, run, run. Run, don't walk, run. Go. I mean, I was like, it go. just is tunnel go. vision at a certain point. Everybody go. I turned around and I just basically ran back towards the gunfire to help up as many people as I could. That's when it took a horrible turn for me. As I stood up, I took a shot to the neck. And I told him I was, I was an EMT and I wanted to work. And he pointed me to the tent. I grabbed some gloves and, um, and went to work. I see the shot coming from Vanderlei Bay, halfway up. Once they realize that the fire is coming from the 32nd floor, the next point is trying to figure out where. I mean, this hotel is massive. So this one security guard who is unarmed begins to approach room 32135. That's where Stephen Paddock is. Paddock is watching him through those surveillance cameras that he set up, and he starts opening fire, hitting the guard in the leg. Now, that provided police and tactical teams the crucial intelligence they needed to know exactly where Stephen Paddock was. As these SWAT teams enter the 32nd floor, they already understand that they have never in American history experienced anything quite like this shooting, and they have no idea what's behind that door of room 135. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.